Well, uh, it's a good play. <laughs> playing the part of Ophelia. That's it. Just that's the dream. I tend. I just have a list of actors that I want to get in a room with or make something with. And when Andrew and I first started talking about doing a thing together, Hamlet arose from that. I think partly because there is such a heavy inheritance on this play and on Shakespeare in general, actors are often intimidated by that and by this, I think, completely false and actually kind of insidious sense that there are rules, that there are certain ways it has to be spoken, when actually Hamlet gives you the rules in this play and says, just speak it, speak it like I'm speaking to you and speak it quickly, don't mouth it, don't overdo it, try and make it as natural as possible, make it like a mirror of nature. Shakespeare will put itself up there because it does, it just, as soon as you start to do it, the poetry will like kind of fly and that's what gives it its flight, it will do that but if you take everything else away from it, you can get down at a level with it and grow with that sort of piece. And I think that's what we all try to do here. I think sometimes I was with really famous plays that you're like, oh, we know what that happens, and the ghost comes, and then blah, 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 blah. And actually for some 15 or 16 year olds, they don't know that the, the, the ghost isn't gonna come back. So you just sort of keep that alive, or they don't know, they don't know who any of these people are. And, uh, and, and that's why it's really interesting to sort of focus on the young audience and see well, what is it that they get and what do they know and what do they not know and um, we live in this box set generation where people say oh my god I watched four hours of some TV series because they want to not because they have to it's not like as Rob says it's not like eating your greens it's not like you have to sit through three and a half hours of Shakespeare and then you'll get some sort of reward or whatever you you, you have to make it as exciting for them as, as possible and so that's what's been really exciting you know. Do I think Shakespeare was bad at writing female roles? No, I don't. I don't. I just think it's, I think it's very easy to lazily lump present day politics onto Shakespeare and to kind of want him to be simple. You know, one of the problems with theatre as a liberal art form is that we are very simplistic, stupidly simplistic about a lot of political reality, you know? And I think so often we do this thing in theatre where we say, you know, isn't feminism great? Isn't racism awful? And we make plays that express simple and stupid truths that don't need whole evenings to express them. And one of the things I think is so great about Gertrude is that she is a woman who has had to choose between being a mom and being a person. You know, she wants to have sex with Claudia to run off and start a new life now that her husband has died. But she's still a mom and those two roles crash into each other. And I, I find that kind of really compelling. I think it's really brilliant. There are definitely more exciting male roles in Shakespeare than there are female old-fashioned sense of the word male and female but what's that um, they're all about human experience and therefore any human can play them in whatever context I think that it um, has relevance or um, is able to be expressed and forwarded as art yeah you, he, he came I'm but I saw his and he saw mine and uh, uh, no, not really. I mean, we probably will at some point have a proper chat about it. But it's so much about what your individual feeling about it is. And uh, uh, so it's, it feels sort of really weirdly personal. 